Here we go. <laughs> so let's begin with Yadid Nefesh, and I'll uh, pop it up on the screen. Yadid Nefesh of Haram Mishohava Eretzona Yarutavdach Kimohaya I'm sorry. I un I muted you. I'm trying to mute some people because uh, we, we should all be muted except you. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> Adurna Zivalam Nafshi Cholot Avata Ana Ena Rifana La Teharot La Noam Ziva As Tis the <laughs> Shabbat Shalom on this very special Shabbat, and it's so wonderful to see everyone, and I know we'll be welcoming more guests as they come in. Um, so let us continue now as we do um, sections of the Kabbalat Shabbat service, the welcoming Shabbat service, Lechu Neranina. Lechu Neranina l'Adonai nari al etzur yishenu Lechu neranina l'Adonai nari al etzur yishenu Nekad mafanav betoda bizmirot nari alo Nekad mafanav betoda we continue Shiro Ladonai Shir Hadash. Shiru la donai, shir chadash, shiru la donai, kol haaretz, shiru la donai, bachu shemo, basru miyom leyom yeshuato, zapru bagoyim kevodo bechol haamim niflotav, ki gadol adonai, umul al meod, 
no rahu al kol elohim mai rai rai ki kol elohe ha'amim elilim va adonai shamayim asa hor vehadar lefana voz betiferet vemikdasho havu ladonai mishpechot amim havu adonai kavod vaod havu ladonai Kevot Shemo Zehu Mincha Uvo Lechat Srota Vaira Ira Hishtachavu Ladonai Pehadrat Kodesh Chilu Mifanav Kol Haaretz Imru Bagoyim Adonai Malach Apti Kon Tevel Baal Timot Yadin Amim Bemesharim Yatsmechu Hashamayim Betagel Haaretz Iram Hayam Umelo Yalos Shadai Vechol Asher Bo Aidai Az Yerananu Kolat Seya Alifne Adonai Kiva Kiva Lishpot Haaretz Yishpot Evel Betzedek Ve Amim Be Munato Yadai Dai 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 so I put into the chat the link if anyone would like to have the entire prayer book. I'm featuring much of it during the service in the shared screen, but if you want to go at your own pace, um, certainly that's an option for you. So you can click on that link and it'll appear in your browser. But we're going to now proceed as uh, we welcome Shabbat. But before we do with Lecha Dodi, we have this very special mystical prayer known as Anna Bekoach. And um, I know that we've done this several times, but Leo, if you wouldn't mind just giving a brief explanation because we, we don't often do this at our services. And every time you explain it, it's a different group that's here. So if you could do that. Absolutely. Um, so in Kabbalat Shabbat, the first leading up to um, the, um, leading up to Le Chadodi, we have you know, a series of Psalms that are meant to kind of bring us through the week and help us to kind of travel through that whole week that has led us up to get us here to Shabbat. And each day brings us closer to this, the joy and the wonderfulness that is Shabbos. And we're so excited to get there. And just before we do, we get this moment to kind of come back into ourselves. And before we can, you know, celebrate outwardly and with the whole community, um, Anna Bakoach gives us a moment to, um, you know, to, to, to ask God one last time, look, this, this you know, this, this week may have been really hard. Um, and can help us to be released from this week, help us to, to move forward, release us, release everybody who's, who's stuck, who's captive, and help us to, to move forward and be really ready for the Shabbat. So there's lots of different interpretations. I feel like I explain it differently every week too, Rabbi, but uh, <laughs> that's what I'm feeling this week with Anna Bakalach. But it's a, it's a very mystical connection involving mm -hmm. the names of the secret names of God. And um, so it mystically yeah. ties us into Shabbat. Anna bekoach bekoach gedulat yemincha yemincha tatir tzuru kal berinatamcha zalvenu tarenu nora Anna bekoach gedulat yemincha Tati tzerura, tati tzerura, kabarina trina tamecha, zagvenu tarenu nora. And that leaves lead, leads us right into the beautiful love poem, Lacha Dodi. And um, 
we'll be doing the whole Lacha Dodi, but just to sort of get into the mu the musical rhythm of it. We do traditional melodies tonight. And um, when we get to the final verse, the custom is to stand and head toward the entrance where we can welcome the Shabbat bride, the Shabbat holiness itself. And while we're doing that, or, or as we conclude it, I'm going to show some photos of Jerusalem in the snow this week. It was just absolutely gorgeous over the last couple of days, even though uh, we're, we're looking forward to a different kind of snowstorm perhaps here. Um, you can see in my background, um, Jerusalem in the snow, the holiness of Shabbat. Then is Shabbat Nikabela. Lechadodili Krat Kala. Then is Shabbat Nikabela. Shamor Vizachor Bedi Borechad. Ishmianu El Hamnuchad Adonai Echad. Ushimo Echad. Lishimulti Ferret Felitila. Lechadodili Krat Kala. Kala <laughs> Nishabatnikabela <laughs> Kenishabatnikabela <laughs> Kala <laughs> Tenishabatni <laughs> Ani am even even at all. He Ver <laughs> Bein parts even is me have an is me have an agila 
Rise. <laughs> Let's now take a moment to breathe deeply as we look at some of these photos of the holiest city on earth. In the snow, not buried, but brought to life as people of all backgrounds found solace and found fun and found joy in the same snow. And the snow didn't just link all peoples in Israel, here in Turkey and here in Athens this week. Let's all take a deep breath and we can be seated as we continue with the prayer of gratitude. Ms. Morshir. Ms. Morshir, Ms. Morshir, Leom Hashabbat. Ms. Morshir, Ms. Morshir, Leom Hashabbat. Tov lehodot l'adonai, Uzameh l'shimcha yon, Lehagir babokech astecha, Vemunatcha baleilon. The conclusion. And as we transition from this welcoming of Shabbat, Kabbalat Shabbat, a sort of a, a prelude, a mood setter, um, let's also set the mood for this very special day, this very special service with a prayer for refugees. And you can join me. Unfortunately, everyone needs to stay muted, but do read along. And so we pray as we recount the centuries of human history we pray that one day bondage will lead to freedom. We pray that indifference will give way to mercy. We pray that hatred will turn to compassion and fear turn to hope. We pray that one day nations will defy history and proclaim in one voice, never again will terror-stricken exiles face angry waters alone. Never again will vulnerable victims be locked behind barbed wire. Never again will desperate refugees be turned away at the borders of freedom. And we vow 
Until that day arrives, we will be the miracle that parts the angry seas for today's refugees. We will take it upon ourselves to lead the mixed multitude to dry land, and we will bring them to a place of redemption. Amen. And now we continue with the Ma'ariv, the evening service, which is part of this whole Friday evening experience. As we rise for the call to prayer, we rise in body or spirit. The Baruch Hu. Baruch Hu et Adonai HaMevorach. Baruch Adonai HaMevorach Leolam Vaed. Baruch Adonai HaMevorach Leolam Vaed. Baruch Adonai, our God, sovereign of time and space, whose word brings the evening dusk, whose wisdom opens the gates of dawn, whose understanding changes the day's division, whose will sets the succession of seasons and arranges the stars in their places in the sky, who creates day and night, who rolls light before darkness and darkness from light, who makes day pass into night, who distinguishes day from night. Adonai Tzvaot is your name, living and ever-present God. May your rule be with us forever and ever. Baruch Adonai, who brings each evening's dusk. Baruch HaVakayam, tamidim lochalenu leolam ba'ed. Baruch Adonai. Shemo. Ba'ari v'aravim. Ahavat olam, timeless, boundless love. Ahavat olam, beit Yisrael. The Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Ve'ahavta ha'et Adonai Elohecha V'chol levavcha v'chol nafshecha V'chol meodecha והיו הדברים האלה אשר נוחי מצבך היום על לבביך ושיננתם לבניך ודיברת בם ושבתך בביתך ובלכתך בדרך ובשפך ובקומך וקשרתם להיות על ידך והיו לתותפות בין עיניך וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובישרך and let's, I'm um, sorry, uh, let's join on the left side of this page, uh, this version of our most important prayer, the Shema. Loving life and its mysterious source with all our hearts and all our spirit, all our senses and strength, we take upon ourselves and into ourselves these promises to care for the earth and those who live upon it, to pursue justice and peace, to love kindness and compassion, we will teach this to our children throughout the passage of the day as we dwell in our homes and as we go on our journeys from the time we rise until we fall asleep. And may our actions be faithful to our words that our children's children may live to know truth and kindness have embraced, peace and justice have kissed, and are one. And we continue uh, the next page um, with this part of the Shema uh, silently at your own pace. We 
conclude. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and we continue. We're on page 44 of the Siddur, the prayer book, and uh, we find this passage of um, the Exodus from Egypt, the passage of redemption, Micha Mocha. And another prayer on behalf of refugees, but it's a blessing of welcoming from Hayes, whom, uh, with whom we affiliate. Uh, of course, uh, for over a century, they've been welcoming the stranger, started with Jewish refugees coming over from Eastern Europe, but it has uh, certainly expanded well beyond that now. And Hayes has its refugee Shabbat, its uh, special Shabbat, um, the beginning of March. Actually, I think this is a very appropriate week to be doing it here, and I'll explain that a little bit later on. But uh, it's perfect for us, of course, because we have our special guests here tonight. So join in this reading. Bless the work of our hands and the work of our lips, Holy One of Blessing. May we be strengthened in our resolve to speak out on behalf of the 65 million people across the globe, still in search of a place to call home. May we open our hearts to welcome those seeking refuge from violence and persecution. May we find the courage to act not on our fears, but on our hope for a world in which all people can live in safety and with dignity. Say, Tolichem, rather, le shalom, guide them in peace. May those who travel by boat, on foot, in overpacked vans, clinging to railway cars, be protected on their journey from oppression to freedom. Shomeat filatenu, Hear our prayer and guide us, so that we may guide them in peace. May it be your will, Adonai, and may it also be ours. And now, the prayer for peace and for security for all. Hashki venu. Hashki venu, Adonai, Eloheinu l'shalom, v'habideinu malkeinu. Now the special biblical proclamation of the Shabbat Vishamru. Vishamru vene Yisrael et Shabbat lasot et Shabbat vedorotam verit olam veni vene Yisrael oti leolam oti leolam oti leolam vishamru Bene Yisrael et ha-Shabbat, lasot et ha-Shabbat l'dorot ha-merit olam. Ki sheshet yamim asa Adonai, asa Adonai, et ha-shamayim ve-et ha-aretz v'shamru, Bene Yisrael et ha-Shabbat, Lasot et ha-shabbat l'dorot z'amberit olam. Uvayom ha-shavii, Shabbat v'ayinafash. Shabbat v'ayinafash. Shabbat v'ayinafash. V'shamru v'ne Yisrael et ha-shabbat. Lasot et ha-shabbat l'dorot z'amberit olam. V'shamru Bene Israel et Shabbat, Lasot et Shabbat, Lidorot Amerit Olam. Olam. 
And we rise now for the Chatzit Kaddish, the half Kaddish. Amen. Amen. Yit parach, yish tabach, yit parach, yit from Vietnam, save it, adar, it alev, it alal, shmeid kudusha, prehu, prehu, lamin kobi hata, vishir hata, tush pehata, venehemata, dami hiran miyama, bimaru, amen. So this is an opportunity for those who would like to um, pray. Silently, I, I had put the uh, the link in in the chat um, for those who'd like to do the traditional Amida. Um, we're going to move ahead. I'm just looking in the chat right now. I see um, Leslie has left me a message that there was a an, a link issue, um, and I hope people are finding their way in. Um, so has word gotten out to uh, to the community members? Thank We've you. We tried. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I, I, I don't know what happened. I apologize for that. Um, but I will say we are we are recording. So um, whatever is said tonight will will be immortal and will last forever out in the, the world of YouTube. Um, so we will make sure to get the link for the recording to everyone who may have been trying to get in. But please do apologize to them on, on our behalf. That's not very welcoming of us, you know. <laughs> It's it's nothing to do with our um, our immigration policies here at uh, Temple Beth El Zoom um, that some people weren't able to get in tonight. So, um, Leo, would you like to uh, to lead us in a in an ending of the Amida melody like Shalom Rav, and then we'll go into the Kiddush. Of course. <laughs> Thank you. Shalom Rav al Yisrael Amcha Tosim Le'olam Shalom Rav al Yisrael Amcha Tosim Le'olam Yihatahu Melech Adon Lechol HaShalom Yihatahu Melech Adon Lechol HaShalom Shalom Rav Al Yisrael Amcha Tasim Le'olam Shalom Rav Al Yisrael Amcha Tasim Le'olam V'tov B'necha Levarech Et Amcha Yisrael V'chol Eit V'chol Sha'a Bishlomecha Shalom Rav al Yisrael Amcha Tasim Le'olam Shalom Rav al Yisrael Amcha Tasim Le'olam Tasim Le'olam And now we rise as our cantor for the evening proclaims the Shabbat and proclaims the miracle of creation and liberation of the creation and the exodus from Egypt with uh, by holding the wine cup and reciting the Kiddush. <laughs> Asher kitshanu v'tzvotav v'ratzavanu V'shabbat kodsho v'yahava u'v'ratzon hinchilanu Zikaron l'maase v'reshit Ki hu yom t'chila l'mikrai kodesh Zecher l'tziyat mitzrayim Ki v'anu v'achata V'yotanu kidashta Mikol ha'amim Veshabat kochecha, viahava uvratzon, inchaltanu, 
Baruch Adonai. Baruch Shemo. Mikadesh HaShabbat. Amen. L'chaim. For those who have wine nearby or grape juice, go for it. And meanwhile, remain standing as we continue with Alenu. Alenu le Shabbat la Don Hakol la Tet Kedula le Yotzeher Bereshit Shelo Asanu Kegoye Haratzot Velo Samanu Kimishpechot Adama Shelo Sam Chalkenu Kahem Vigor Alenu Kechol Hamonam Vanachnu Korim. Umishtahavim umodim, Lipne Mahalach Mahe Hamlachim, Hakadosh Barahu. Hakatuva Tora Teha Adonahim Loch Leolam Bahed. Our congregation mourns this week the passing of Susan Clark course, uh, known to so many in our congregation and the wife of Martin Clark. Also, Gloria Letterman, the mother of David Letterman, we pray that both families be comforted among the mourners of Zion and Jerusalem. We also recall in loving memory this coming week, the art sites of Yetta Adler, Nelson Alpert, Julius Bressler, Ruth Cass, Gerald, Gerald Cohen, Ronald Cohen, Shirley Diamond, Ida Elkin, Ida Finkelstein, Becky Ginsburg Tonopolsky, Morris Granowitz, Bernard Greenwald, Elmer Huppert, Bernard Queskin, Martin Levine, Albert Meltzer, Paul Miller, Philip Miller, David Rakowitz, Clara Rosenberg, Sarah Rosenberg, Emmanuel Rothman, Martin Schechter, Sophie Sidoroff, Fanny Silverman, Herbert Snipper, Wally Wallach, Gertrude Wolfson, and William Yonet. Those who mourn and those who recall Yardsight are uh, invited to rise and to unmute uh, to join in the mourners' Kaddish. Yit Gadal, Viyit Gadash, Shemei Rabbah, Vialma, Divrach, Irute, Viamlich, Malchute, Vachayechon, Uviomechon, Uvchaye, the whole Beit Yisrael, Bagala, Uvizman, Kari, Vimru, Amen. Yeheshme Rabama Vorach, Liolam, Lome Almaya, Yit Barach, Vish Tabach, Viet Baar, Viet Romam, Viet Nase, Viet Adar, Viet Ale, Viet Alal, Shemeda Kutcha, Brichu, Liela, Min Kolber Hata, Vishirata, Tushpa Hata, Veneche Mata, Damiran, Vialma, Vimru, Amen, Yehesh Lama, Rabba, Min Shemaya, Bechayim, Alenu, Vial Kol Yisrael, Vimru, Amen, Ose Shalom, Bimromav, Huya ase shalom, aleinu v'al kol Yisrael, v'al kol Yoshvei Tevel, v'imru, amen. So, um, thank you so much, Leo, first of all, for, uh, for leading um, the service tonight. Um, we're going now to proceed to the, the special um, presentations that uh, we're so looking forward to. And, we're so happy to uh, to have invited very special guests today. But I mentioned before, I'll just take a minute to set uh, the scene in a way, um, because we me I mentioned that um, that this is a very appropriate week um, to be focusing on this topic. In fact, this week we read the portion of Mishpatim, which means laws, statutes, and although last week was the Ten Commandments, this week in some ways is more important, it has many more commandments, most of them very ethically oriented about social relationships, about creating a just society. And within this portion, we find an expression that we find many times actually in the Torah, the commandment not to oppress the stranger. Um, in fact, it's 36 times that you'll see it 
in the entire Torah to not oppress the stranger. So I'm going to show you one of the times in this portion. Beger lo tone velo til chatsenu ki gerim hayitem be'eretz mitzrayim. You shall not wrong a stranger, Exodus um, chapter 22, verse 20. You shall not wrong a stranger or oppress him or her or them, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. And so the question is, why say not to wrong and not to oppress? Why do you need both? Why the redundancy? Um, according to one commentator, famous commentator, Rashi, well, of course, this was the Torah's way of emphasizing the importance of the commandment. But they looked for other ways to distinguish the two. Um, for instance, not wronging the stranger means with words and not and, and emotional abuse and not oppressing means by not defrauding him or her or them with actions. It's interesting to note that the word lachatz, to oppress, we've seen before, and we've seen it in the book of Exodus just a few chapters ago, referring to the oppression of the Hebrew slaves in Egypt. So this connection is directly drawn from the stranger to the slaves, the Hebrew slaves, and couple of the commentators draw a remarkable implication from that. Uh, Ramban and Rashi say that we shouldn't think of the stranger as totally defenseless at all, because just as the Israelites in Egypt had the ultimate ally on their side, God, so does the stranger. That connection is drawn between the Israelites who were strangers and the stranger who might be a stranger to the Israelites a stranger among the Israelites. In fact, and this is almost radical in its implications, this theology, if forced to choose sides between native-born Israelites, members of the tribe, as they might be called, and the stranger among them, God will choose the stranger. God always chooses the side of the oppressed. It is because we were strangers that we were rescued from slavery. It was because we were slaves that we needed to be rescued. This is a profound Jewish theological concept that the stranger comes first. And I just had to share that because it is from this portion. It is so appropriate this week. And now I'd like to uh, call upon um, our guests uh, to come up. Uh, you've probably seen the flyer, but I just want to reiterate. Um, so sirs, Stanford Interfaith Refugee Settlement uh, will be um, presenting first, and I have a couple of presentations, and I think I, do, I need to co-host um, one or two of them, and uh, either Jean or Amy. Um, and then Don Strait is going to talk about Building One Community. So without further ado, let us uh, call our guests. So unmute yourself a, and let me know if I need to, to. Yeah, this is Amy. Could you make me a co-host so I can I share my screen, please? I would be delighted to make you a co-host. Well, we are you. actually a congregation of co-hosts. <laughs> All co-hosts so like... and, and no, no hosts or whatever that oh, expression okay. is. Whatever. Go ahead. All right. Um, hold on just a second. Okay, uh, Jean Meyer and I, I'm Amy Ewing, are co-chairs of SIRS, and I'm going to talk for four charts, and then Jean is going to share you pictures of the families we've helped with you. Um, I just want to have one chart, which will be the next chart, talking about the need, which includes refugees and refugees or asylum seekers of, of, uh, of different sorts, um, and I'll go into that on in the next chart. And But we saw the need and saw this wonderful quote from Margaret Mead that said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. We decided our goal was a bit more modest than that. We would like to make a difference in the refugee crisis, one life, one family at a time. So we'll show you a couple of charts that introduce you to the teams that we had to set up within our group to handle all the various bits of work that are needed to welcome a family. 
and then share with you some of the immediate needs that we have as we look to uh, welcoming a fourth family. And then after we uh, talk about those, then Jean will share some uh, wonderful pictures of the families that we've helped. And I hope uh, after this, I can make the, the, these four charts available to you in a PDF so you have access to the, um, the, the detail information and you can take a look at our website. And if you do have uh, some ways that you can help us, you can go to our contact page and let us know. So the need, there are refugees, so-called SIVs, and a new category, APAs. Um, all of them are people who have fled to or need to flee to escape danger and persecution. And they all have the ability to work in the US uh, when they get here, but there are some differences. Refugees flee to a foreign country or a power and then look to get welcomed into the US. And there's a one or two years security screening process. You see the number here that they're over 26 million. That's different from the highest number of 65 million, but because highest is including people who are also displaced within their own country. These refugees are the people who've left their country and are looking to get resettled. And the sad truth is only about 1% get resettled each year. There just is not that much capacity or will in each of the, in the uh, recipient countries. And the US increased our ceiling for the fiscal year and set a higher ceiling for fiscal year 2022, but then life happened as we'll see in a couple of uh, sentences. Uh, special immigrant visa holders also need to flee because they assisted the US as an interpreter, a driver, or they worked for the government and are now in harm's way. They get vetted in their country and then brought into the US and they are not only can work right away, but they uh, are a permanent resident with a green card. They're all set to go. So we had these uh, plans to welcome refugees and the special immigrant visa holders. And then Afghanistan fell to the Taliban in August of 2021. And the US uh, evacuated over 100,000 people. Uh, at least half of them were housed right away in US bases uh, in the US and almost half were in US bases abroad. And this includes vulnerable supporters of the US, of press, of women's rights, people who feared for their life. Now, since they, they have been uh, vetted for security, but not all the other vetting, they have employment authorization for just two years and must apply for asylum to extend that. Uh, that may change with legislation, we'll have to wait and see. But all these people can work and they have access to Department of Social Services, uh, temporary financial assistance and health insurance until um, they have jobs that, that uh, make them financially independent. Our group is set up, uh, we've organized ourselves into a core team and then, then various teams to do different categories of work that's needed. And we do this all under this training and supervision of IRIS, which is Integrated Refugee and Immigrant Services, which is a, a nonprofit of professionals, paid professionals who guide uh, community co-sponsor groups of volunteers like ours, like SIRS. And our core team, uh, you may recognize three of the names. We have Rosalie Fisher and Jody Maxner and Carmeet, who are all part of our core team and also work on the various SIRS teams. You'll see, I won't read you everything on this chart, but you'll see that we have teams to find housing and then work on the pre-arrival, which is all the moving in and setting up at the furniture and sorting through clothes. Uh, and then when the family arrives, we need interpreters to welcome them and then to work with them. Health is important because they come with many deferred problems, lots of physical problems, sometimes a need for mental health counseling and often a myriad of dental problems. Education has a lot of work around it in terms of registrations for the kids and adults, and also tutoring and homework help and some childcare. 
And then we want to get them acculturated, know where the grocery stores, stores are in the banks, give them guidance, take them on some outings so they have some fun. Then transportation is important, both using a bus and using bikes. Employment so they can get a job as quickly as possible. And the people coming in may be highly skilled or they may be illiterate with minimal skills. So we work with them wherever they are, wherever they're coming from. And then financial is important to explain our currency and budgets, help them get state benefits and so forth. And then we do some community outreach. You may have actually been to some of the movies that we have co-sponsored with Iris and the Ferguson Library. We have a, a documentary about refugees about once every six months. And then we have to communicate as well. The picture on the bottom, you'll see Rosalie uh, tutoring our, our um, Afghan SIV little girl, Deanna. So our immediate needs for the families, the biggest one is rental housing with three bedrooms. We've been told to expect a family of six um, which requires three bedrooms or a very tall two or very big two bedroom with a landlord that's willing to have us include the six people there. Um, and so that we're looking for housing. We can use gift cards for goods. Uh, we need more volunteers. We've been very heartened at the number of goods that we've gotten from your congregation and from others and, and volunteers that keep signing up. But we can use even more. We need more on the employment team for cold calls, helping find jobs, finance team to work with the budget with the family and different matters that come up, more Pashto interpreters, child care providers. And we have some ESL um, instructors in our group, but we can use more, particularly once we get another family. And then you can see uh, we need clothing um, winter jackets and other winter wear, and then clothing for the young kids. We usually hold off on the parents until we know their sizes and then can look either at Target or at thrift shops or uh, other, venue, other places for reasonably priced uh, clothing. And then you can see the other used items here we're looking for. TV, kitchen canister sets, wastebasket wall clock, toys for the kids, um, yeah, so if you can help us with any of those items, we would really appreciate it. And you can go to that sirsct.org, excuse me, dot org slash contact and let us know. So let me stop sharing this and go to the next slide, which is the uh, charts that, that Jean is going to show. And once I share my screen, I can't make I can't tell whether you're seeing it. So if somebody could let me know that you see the new set of slides. Yes, we see. Okay, good. So Jean, can you unmute yourself? All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, this actually is the beginning on the far left started actually in 2015. Um, when that young boy f washed up on the shore and had died, um, a group wanted to find out what we could do and we went to IRIS. That is the headquarters in, of IRIS in New Haven. And uh, the picture on the right is some of us who were in the core group and the forefront is Chris George. Um, he is the executive director of IRIS. He is promoting co-sponsorship such as our group um, nationally and internationally. And you may have read about him recently in the newspaper. On the far left, in the very beginning, we decided we needed a name and we came up with Stanford Interfaith Refugee Settlement, a lot with the help of, of Amy and that. And um, this was our initial uh, logo. We started off in the beginning just as now we're looking for help in all the different areas that are listed there. And the refugees are welcome here. This was around a bit back in 2016, that image. And it's, it's tough just to look at that. And it made us want to try our best to do something. And pre-arrival, well, pre-arrival <laughs> goes way back 
once we decide that we would like to get involved, as we did in that January of uh, 2016, we had to um, gather furniture, furnishings, find out about our community, et cetera, um, before we could even put our application in. And if, in the bottom on the left, you'll see a garage full of furniture and furnishings. And that was for our first family. We have other garages and areas currently waiting for a fourth family, but that's what it is. It's stored ahead waiting. Then we have to, once they uh, alert us that a family was coming, sometimes, uh, let's we go back to that other one, Amy? Oh, sure, sorry. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> um, once we hear of a family, we may have two weeks. Um, the last time we knew somebody was coming, but their actual arrival date, we had one day and we're told right now that's apt to happen again. This case, we had a couple weeks to find a home. And in this case, we had to make some adaptations. As you can see, we needed a, a ramp. Once we get the home, once we have it all set, we move in. And there we are, there's Amy hanging a picture. Um, first one uh, on the left was our first family. The second um, where Amy is was our second family. And there we are cleaning up, putting furniture together, putting beds together and so forth. And in the far right is preparation for our third family. And here's a volunteer and her children making a beautiful welcome home sign, which we had propped very prominently in their home. Now we can go to the next one. <laughs> so this is uh, waiting for our first family. And our first family came from Syria. And balloons are tradition that we bring every time. And we will wear our little name tags. And here we see Maisam and in Arabic saying, welcome, welcome. And it has their name at the bottom. So every time we meet one of the families, we do the same thing. And this first family came in April of 2016, a family of six, uh, ranging at that time from three to 16. And this was in the first month or so that they were there. They stayed one year. Uh, as we all know, the housing is expensive in Stanford and they made connections with people they knew in California where they presently live. And you'll, if you look to the left and see the size of the children in one year, you'll see quite a change. Mm -hmm. And also the wheelchair is a little fancier. So a lot happened in that one year that they were here in Connecticut. And some of you have met this family. And this is the SIV family that Amy spoke of on the far right was the day they arrived. And uh, they all come into JFK and they were very willing to have their picture taken on that first day. We celebrated them being here one year with a cake and, and that's in the center and everybody knows that <laughs> now in 2021, uh, we wear the masks and that's uh, where they are now. And it took actually three years for the dad and this family to become financially independent. And now he's working two jobs, she's working two jobs. Uh, Deanna is now in junior high school and her dad said, where did her childhood go? So we've been lucky enough to experience and enjoy their, their growing. Excuse me, Jean, uh, the financial independence actually happened in two years. We thought it would happen. I'm faster. sorry, it was two yeah, years. It was just two years. Yes, yes. Yep. they've been here three years. Yes. Right. We're into their third year. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Uh, and outings. Not only do we work with them in education and health and all the other things, but we do some fun things. And then the left is the Maritime Center. Um, and that was with our first family. And to your right is the Bronx Zoo, which Amy has helped to take all the families there now. First, second, and third family have all had a wonderful trip to the Bronx Zoo and they enjoyed it. Each one with their, their favorite animals for sure. 
Jean, I'm, I'm uh, sorry to interrupt. I, I, yeah. I, you know, if you have a couple more, that's great. There is uh, just, um, I want to make sure that everyone who is on uh, this Zoom um, identifies themselves. Um, I'm a little concerned just, and, uh, you know, unless you put a name to your, to your Zoom, I won't be able to, we won't, we won't be able to keep you here. So please do that. Um, um, anyway, so please wrap up and uh, we'll, we'll continue. Okay. Thanks. Yes, and, and on the left is us at the airport waiting for um, the family that came in November 8th. Unfortunately, this was November 2nd and they were not on that plane. So one week later, the same group went back and the family, uh, as you see, is a family of six uh, arrived from Afghanistan. And here is the family on the far left, uh, a picture of them at Thanksgiving. Uh, the same group that made that wonderful welcome sign, their children made that sign. And on the far right, Latham Park. And that was taken by the mom and sent to us. And the children are fabulous. Uh, you'll maybe get a chance to meet them at some point, but they're, they're just as happy as the picture. And then what's nice to see is the things that happen in Stanford we share with uh, our new friends and on the left, and on the right, you'll see both the last two families are gathered together and enjoying varying things here in town. Our fourth family we know is coming from Afghanistan by way of Doha. They are now at a military base in um, Qatar and they'll be coming to Stanford. We know as much as they're coming in February. That's it, we don't know when, but hopefully pretty soon. We are in need of a home. I, I like this picture. Some people have seen this before, but this is the first, the young man and our first family, shy. And he started in this picture far to the left and slowly, slowly moved towards this little bird. And it just symbolized a lot with the families that it takes a while to feel safe and absolutely everything takes time and all the ramifications of what it does to assimilate here in America, having left their home. And this is our, our little baby. He's, his brother put him on that tricycle. He would have fallen off in about a minute. But he and all of us, thank you for listening to us and attending this evening. Thank you so much. And we're now, we're now going to hear um, about one of our incredible community partners, Building One Community. We've had some deep involvement with them for several years. Um, but I want to first ask Leslie, do you want to say anything just representing our committee? Leslie Glenn has been doing so much to put all of this together and I'd be remiss if I didn't give you that chance. And also, by the way, you can put questions into the chat. Leslie's gonna keep an eye on them. And if we have time, um, we'll maybe get to some of them. Go ahead, Leslie. Oh, thank you, Rabbi, and thank you to Amy and Jean, and thank you in advance to Don um, for, for coming tonight. And I have to thank Rosalie and the other members of our committee, who are many of them who are on, um, small but mighty, but we uh, appreciate everyone being here and feel this is so important for our community. And we want to make sure that everyone has, um, you know, if, if you want to help, um, you know, we're we welcome you and we welcome welcome the help. If you want to learn more, that's great. So thank you again. And um, I think we'll turn it over to Don Strait from Building One Community. Thank you, Leslie. And thank you, Rabbi Hammerman. Um, it's an honor to be here uh, tonight. Uh, my name is Don Strait. I'm the deputy director of Building One Community. Um, the organization uh, really appreciates the interest uh, and the support of the congregation, um, most recently with uh, Thanksgiving uh, gift baskets. Um, thanks to Leslie for, um, for making that happen. And uh, also uh, thanks to Mark Lingle. I don't know if he is um, connected tonight, but um, we're excited about the Interfaith um, Council's uh, series. Uh, this being the, the first of them. So um, it's, it's certainly exciting to be here. Um, I know that 
the congregation has heard um, about building one community before from Catalina Horak, our former executive director. So I won't um, spend a lot of time describing all of our work. Um, what I'd like to do is give you a quick overview of our mission and our services, the involvement of our volunteers. I will tell you about one program that we were expanding because of um, a really, really strong need. Um, if there's time, I'd like to give you just a couple of stories. Um, I will share slides at that point because I have a couple of pictures, uh, not nearly as many as um, <laughs> Amy's and Jean's, which were um, quite lovely. Um, but I will share a couple of pictures. And then Leslie asked me to um, share volunteer opportunities, which I'm very happy to do and I will do at the end. Um, so uh, our mission, uh, Building One Community gives immigrants the tools that we feel um, that they need to succeed in becoming fully participating uh, members of our community. So that's, the, that's part of the, the idea of building one community. They're becoming a part of, of our Stamford and our Fairfield County community. The other uh, part of it is our volunteers. Volunteers play an incredibly important role. Um, and as I said, I'll get to that later, but we see, and I actually experienced this directly uh, because I started as a volunteer at Building One Community. Um, what we have is a community made up of native born people, immigrants who've been here a while and have a lot of skills and the newcomers, um, the strangers, if you will. Um, and I, I love that, um, that, that uh, idea that the stranger comes first because that really is the philosophy of Building One Community. Um, so, so it's really one community composed of a lot of different parts. Um, and it's, it's very exciting to us to be able to see the progress that um, immigrants make when they are given these tools. Um, we provide language training, English language learning, um, job skills, immigration legal services, services, um, that are hard for immigrants to access, we help them. Uh, so when you come to a new uh, society, there's a different culture, you don't know the language, um, health, care, schools, these can be really hard to interact with and we're, we're sort of um, help with that interface. And then finally, we help parents advocate for educational equity and for a better school experience, experience excuse me, for their kids. So we were founded um, 10 years ago. Since then, we have served 13,000 immigrants who speak 43 different languages and come from 112 countries. And most recently during the pandemic, although uh, we uh, are not set up, we're not originally set up to provide emergency services, we have provided emergency services during the pandemic just because of the severe impact on immigrants, um, we have either coordinated or directly given $1.7 million in emergency financial support. Uh, we have provided COVID vaccines to more than 1,300 people. Uh, so 10 years ago, we had one staff person that was Catalina Horak, the original uh, executive director and served till last year. Now we have about 35, and the majority of our staff, including Anka Bajarina, our executive director, are themselves immigrants. And if you uh, visit B1C, especially before the pandemic and after the pandemic, uh, you will see a beehive of activity with immigrants, volunteers, and staff all working together uh, the main part of our office is a converted warehouse space, actually, and it is incredibly flexible. Big meetings, you know, small sit downs with tutors, classrooms, we have dividers that are constantly moving around. Um, it's really a, a bustling center with a lot of hard work and fun. Now, the beehive of activity of now, of course, is about three quarters online. So it's a quieter place, but it is still there. It is still very, very active. Um, and there's a lot going on. So we created our immigration legal services program in 2017. 
and it has uh, expanded um, very quickly. Until August of 2021, we had um, a staff where at the center we had an attorney and a senior program administrator. Um, and in 2021, we served 743 clients who worked on 395 cases. But there was a major gap, and that has to do with deportation. Fairfield County, unfortunately, um, and this surprises most people when they hear it, has more than 10,000 people in removal proceedings. Removal, another word for deportation, which puts our county in the top 2% of counties nationwide for the number of people in deportation proceedings. Two out of three of them are not represented by a lawyer. Now, under US law, many people who are in deportation proceedings have a right to stay in the country, either on humanitarian grounds that are in US law or other grounds. But unfortunately, if you don't have a lawyer, your chances of proving that you have a right to stay are very slim. Studies have shown that someone with a lawyer is 10 times more likely to, to succeed to demonstrate their right to say, stay and to win their deportation case than if they don't have a lawyer. Now, the two out of three not having a lawyer uh, compares very unfavorably with neighboring states. In New York State, if you're in deportation, you have a 75% likelihood of having a lawyer. In Rhode Island, it's 70%. So Connecticut, about 33%. <clears throat> and Fairfield County, we have a lot of these cases. So given the, the damage that a deportation can occur, and keep in mind, these folks often are married to US citizens or they have US citizen children who have never been to the country that the United States is trying to deport them to. Um, we decided that we needed to create a, a, a removal defense program. We did that. We hired a director in August. Um, we um, have two legal fellows who joined at about the same time and we're adding another attorney. So this is our most recent initiative. We have 28 clients we're representing now in immigration court in, in Hartford. Um, in September, we made a temporary pivot to try to gain um, humanitarian parole, also known as APA in, um, uh, Amy's slide uh, for uh, 39 uh, Afghans who are in Afghanistan who would like to leave the country, who very much need to leave the country, and they have family members in Connecticut who came to us. So uh, we've, we've been working on that as well. Um, now at this point, I'd like to share my screen. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. Um, all right. So just to give you a couple of um, stories. One is about three children from um, Guatemala. <clears throat> now, um, there's a lot of poverty and violence in Guatemala, beautiful country, but a lot of problems. And um, uh, often there's um, such pressure to leave. Um, it's, it can be really a desperate situation. And some people come to the United States to earn money, to send it back to their children who they leave in care of um, other family members. And in this family, Beverly, Elvis, and Darwin uh, were left in Guatemala. Their mother came to Stanford. Um, but the, the situation in Guatemala um, to care for them broke down. So they tried to come to the United States. And when they entered the United States, they were apprehended and put into deportation proceedings. Uh, five years of uh, representation, first by another nonprofit and then by building one community, um, actually resulted in 
first a finding by the probate court in Connecticut that they needed to be with their mother to be properly cared for. Uh, and then uh, the immigration court respected that finding and granted them permission to stay. So Beverly, uh, who is now 22, has graduated from high school and is working toward becoming a social worker. Elvis is a high schooler and he dreams of becoming a business entrepreneur. And the youngest sibling, Darwin, who is just 11, is excited to have a career in technology, hopefully. So that's a demonstration of um, what uh, a deportation defense program can do. And we actually did it, um, most of it, before we created our removal defense practice. Um, second story is about Carlos Rivera. Um, he was the uh, first participant of Building One Communities Immigrant Entrepreneur Incubator Program. Uh, and actually uh, was coached by Building One Community board member, Bruce Coe, who is um, attending this Zoom event. Um, he was a day worker getting picked up at the, um, at exit eight. Uh, some of you may have, have seen. Uh, he was also getting his GED at the same time. He was working for an Italian man uh, in a landscaping business. When the, Italian, when the man uh, retired, uh, he offered the business to Carlos. Carlos uh, bought it, and since then he's been growing it significantly, and he now is employing day workers from Exit 8. Um, so, um, uh, you know, a wonderful success story. There are many of those I could share more, um, but I would like to get to the volunteer opportunities of Building One Community, and just a few words about um, my situation, I was an executive director of another nonprofit for 25 years and I left that job in 2017. I kept hearing wonderful things about building one community. And even though I was sort of planning on having a, 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 a life uh, centered on consulting, um, uh, uh, my wife and I were so impressed by what we heard, we decided to volunteer. We were English language tutors, um, a job which requires nothing more than knowing how to speak English, because what you're doing is sitting down with, um, with ELL learners and helping them practice. Uh, so once a week, we would go to B1C. Uh, we would get to participate with these really inspiring and hardworking immigrants uh, and grew more and more attached to the place. Having been an executive director, I offered to help in other ways. I got more and more involved. And uh, pretty soon I was offered the job of deputy director when Anka uh, became executive director, replacing Catalina, who many of you have met. Uh, so, so that's where I am. But I can say uh, with a lot of enthusiasm that volunteering at B1C is really, um, uh, an incredibly inspiring experience. There are wonderful staff uh, who facilitate it and wonderful um, people who you're working with. So uh, English language learning tutor is the first uh, opportunity here. Um, uh, homework club online. A homework club is a, is a wonderful program uh, for um, younger kids to um, sit down and get homework help. Um, youth group tutor, uh, that's actually um, done by high school youth who are um, tutoring younger kids. And then we have um, technology literacy tutor, which is for somebody who's comfortable with technology, various platforms and is willing to sit down and instruct the basics uh, to people who are uh, probably behind the curve. Um, there is a significant digital divide um, in, in the United States um, with immigrants suffering, especially now. So um, important program. We work to recover uh, wages that haven't been paid to immigrants. Sorry for the misspelling um, bilingual. Um, we are looking for uh, interpreters. If you happen to know any of these three languages, 
Spanish, Haitian, Creole, or Farsi uh, and can interpret. We would love to work with you. Um, and then uh, we have a lovely garden next to Building One Community. Our office is on Selleck Street. We're very proud of the garden. Um, and that's, those are the main opportunities right now. Um, what I'd like to do though, is we have a sheet that describes these opportunities in a bit more detail. I can email those to Leslie, if that's okay. Um, and then they're available to the congregation. Um, and uh, if, as it says, if you're interested, uh, you can register in the volunteer section of b1c.org and then contact Margarita who is an absolutely lovely person. She'll tell you about B1C and help you get started. So that's what I wanted to say, and I'm happy to answer any questions if there's time. So Leslie, go ahead and, and check the chat. Um, we have time for a few questions and thank yeah. you so much. I just have one that I wanna, because you mentioned a few of the success stories and there's a follow-up. Um, in 2018, um, Miriam Martinez was nearly deported and um, she was, it was stayed at the last minute and a lot of the community rallied around. I don't remember, I, I just wanna follow up because I brought her, we invited her to high holiday services that year with her daughters, um, Allison, I think, and Brianna. And um, Brianna was the reason really because of an illness that, uh, that Miriam, needed to stay here, uh, not be deported to Guatemala. And um, and I've never been prouder of our congregation with the way we welcomed her to services on Rosh Hashanah. Do you have an update on how she's doing? Uh, I don't, that was before my time. I'd be happy to get it though and send it to you later. Okay, yeah, that'd be helpful, thank you. And I will, you know, I'll take a screen grab after Shabbat of, um, of the volunteer opportunities and, and definitely share that with the congregation and Leslie will as well. Yes, we have um, we have two questions. Um, one is, is Building One Community a 501c3 uh, nonprofit, which I believe it is, and um, where does your uh, financial um, support come from for the new arrivals? Uh, yes, we are a 501c3, thanks for asking. Um, and our financial support comes from uh, private donors, individuals, and foundations, um, some corporate support, but mostly um, foundations and individuals. Okay. And then um, the next question was, are there volunteer opportunities for teens, which I, I believe there are, and um, Margarita is also the correct person that runs all the volunteer opportunities. Yes, that's right. And the youth group is a um, is a terrific group for um, teens to get involved and help younger kids. Um, and teens are very well suited for the tutoring because um, math um, is incomprehensible to um, uh, many adults who, who took it years ago. It's changed. Um, so uh, we really welcome um, teenagers. For uh, for Jean and, and Amy, I just, um, you know, I I'd love to find ways that we as a congregation could be involved um, when future families arrive, other than totally monopolizing your, your leadership force um, with three Bethel people who represent us very, very well. But what, you know, can we as a congregation, I know other congregations have done that, like First Congregational, I believe. Um, so what are some of the things we could do collectively? Let's see. <laughs> uh, financial support is always helpful. There are a lot of opportunities for volunteers at this time. Um, collectively, it's, it's more of a, you know, an individual family and so forth. Um, we did have our new family coming and you know, putting together a basket, a welcome basket of food or toys or um, cards to welcome them that would be that would be really really nice from from the whole congregation which would you know sure. that would be really, that would be really meaningful that's something good so let's maybe look into that um anyway lots this of was, individual things <laughs> right of course 
Yeah, because we are handling a second family in such a short period of time. Um, our volunteers are going to be spread thin, so individual volunteers would be very helpful. Right, and we'd love to bring some to services or, or to to speak to us at some point when they're English and you know when they have uh, um, some command of the language and you know and they're settled. Uh, but I think uh, our second family dad would be would be flattered to be asked to come. Okay. At this point, the the new family uh, does not speak English. They're just learning. Of course. But he would be very happy to do that, I think. Amy, and, did you want to say something? Yeah, I was thinking, uh, Jean, uh, something that they could do as a group is we know that the family's going to be coming straight from Doha, Qatar to here. So they aren't going to have all the warm weather clothing. So if you could pull together fairly quickly uh, used hats, scarves, gloves, mittens, the jackets we need. We have uh, jackets for the moms, but uh, you know we we need all those other items, and that might be something fun to pull together. Great, thank you. So, Leslie, anything else you want to say to sort of wrap it up? And Julie, also, um, I know you're here somewhere, um, and our, our Bethel cares community is just so active and so involved. I would just say thank you again um, to Amy and Jean and to Don uh, for coming tonight and for sharing and um, just thank and thank you everyone here uh, for attending. Thank you for inviting us. Uh, definitely. I don't thanks. think we'll have any problem getting you um, items off of that list. I can tell you that um, <laughs> I think between all of us here and the multiple congregations that are here, I already have the 11 year old girl clothing started. So Ooh, thank you for sharing tonight because you've come to the right place. And, and, and not a single hand me down, right? <laughs> no, no, no. The, yes. I mean, we we use used clothing, very gently used hand me downs um, because, it, you know, reduce, reuse, recycle. And there are some things we have to by law buy new, like mattresses, so they don't come with bed bugs and pillows uh, and car seats, but everything else we do as much as we, and, and underwear, but everything else we try to get uh, uh, used. I was because, just kidding. Her daughter's yeah. bat mitzvah was last week. And, um, <laughs> and I have a feeling a, a bat mitzvah dress may be um, in, in, in oh. her future. Um, <laughs> so, Rosalie Fisher, who better yes, sir. to give announcements than you? Absolutely. This has been so wonderful. It warms my heart to see such involvement from our synagogue and from Building One Community. Jean and Amy have done so much, and now we're branching out, and it's just lovely. Thank you all. My announcements are the follows. We are... Um, if you need a, a COVID test, there's a link in the Shabbat announcements that you can get five of them, four, excuse me, four of them. Tomorrow morning, there's a service. Uh, um, Rabbi will be talking more about uh, Mishpatim, the uh, laws that are in the uh, per portion of the week. Uh, Sunday, every Sunday and every day. Also, we have a minion, a weekday minion and a Sunday minion. minion. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful way to support those who need to have a minion. Um, what else? Oh, bingo, Sunday. Bingo for, for young babies, not babies, children. Um, at four o'clock on Sunday, there's a link here to, to also to register. And Rabbi is continuing for, as always, to inform us that there's a 20 session class. And this one is on the new Jewish canon, ideas and debates from 1980 to 2015. So a good time to learn. And our, our Rabbi Ginsburg is doing a class on the Talmud. And then we have fun. Also, on March 19th, we have Temple Rock, and we're not sure at this point if it's going to be live or virtual, just stay tuned. And that's it. A busy time and a thankful time to all of you who have 
come tonight. And Rabbi and Leo, thank you very much for your uh, leading of this service tonight. Shabbat Shalom to all. Shabbat Shalom, and thank you to everyone. And and Rosalie mentioned I'll be talking about the portion tomorrow. I'm actually going to dig deeper into the the little bit that I gave tonight about the stranger and how it um, how it's interpreted in our portion. So as you might notice over the course of this service, uh, dusk has descended on Jerusalem, but the snow is still there. And um, in fact, in a moment, you're going to see the Torah because I brought the Torah home, so I won't have to schlep over through the snow uh, to the temple tomorrow. Um, so join us tomorrow. Leo, how about concluding our service? Absolutely. Yigdal. Awesome. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I don't know what page Yigdal is on. But I'm it's right back. here. Perfect. <laughs> Nimzavienetomitsiuto, <laughs> Shafan vuato netano, elan she se gulato veti farto, lo kam vi israel ke moshe od, navi umabi et munato, torat metatan le amo el, al yad nevi o ne man beto, lo, lo ya khalifa el, velo ya mirdato, le o la mi mazulato, so fevio de asetare nu, Ma beat the soft of our vecad mato, go melish chesed ke mi falo, no tain the rasha ra ke rishato, you shlach like it's yamin, meshihe nu, leave dot mchake kets your shuato, me team mihae el bero hasto, baroha de hard shame to hilato, me team mihae el bero hasto, baroha de hard shame. And just in case you thought I was kidding, from out of Zion comes forth the Torah um, right here. Uh, so um, also, as I mentioned before, I will be uh, posting the, this service uh, on YouTube so people will have a chance. Spread the word. I know some people weren't be able to get on tonight. Um, so please let them know that they can watch. Shabbat Shalom. And please be safe in the snow and with uh, the COVID uh, situation as well. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you very much. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. A lot of Shabbat Shalom.